You know, they always say preacher's kids and cop kids are the worst. <laughs> I find that interesting because in my profession, I am certainly a preacher full-time, but I also used to be a full-time law enforcement officer. So one would think my kids are doomed. Well, I've actually been pretty blessed. In fact, I was scared that if my kids did even just half the things I did as a youngster, that uh, I was in for it. But fortunately, my kids have been a whole lot better. I'd love to say it's because of my parenting, but I... I really just think I've been very fortunate, uh, and I pray that I continue will to be. Now, the obstacles in life that we face and we get worried about, sometimes when we're young, it's how do we get through school? And then we get to those college years as, well, we got to get through college. We, we have to get a job. What about finding a wife? And, and all those things can be challenges, buying our first house, buying a car. But to be honest with you, I don't know that there's anything that's more challenging than being a parent. There are a lot of books that I've read, one of such as this book here, to try and help me understand how do I conduct myself as a father? How do I talk to my children? How do I be a better parent? And while books written by men are good, let us always understand that God's Word, the Bible, is the best book to always consult and go to when it comes to parenting, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to any issue of life. Today on the program, I want us to examine what does God's Word say about parenting? As we answer that question, we'll look into the Bible and help you, and hopefully me, be better parents. Thanks for joining me, Guy Montgomery, for Have a Bible Question, where we search God's Word for Bible answers to your Bible questions. As I spoke a moment ago, books that are written by humans can be profitable. But most of the time when I've read self-help books on parenting or finances or whatever it may be, the truth is the parts of the books that they get right, normally the truth is already contained in the Word of God. And so as we study about parents today and what does the Bible say about parenting, we want to start in God's Word. Normally it's best to go back to the beginning. And you go to Genesis chapter 1 chapter 2, you see the creation of this world. Now it's important to note that God could have created this world any way He wanted to. And He could have had procreation, the repopulation of this world, take any kind of fashion that He wanted it to. He could have had it to where we walk around a tree three times backwards and then we, we utter a saying and jump up and down twice, do three jumping jacks, two push-ups, and then boom, another human being is formed. But He didn't do that. It's by design that God understood that man didn't need to be alone. He created Eve, woman, to be with man, to have marriage. If you didn't catch the previous episode we talked about marriage, we encourage you to go back on YouTube and catch that episode and watch it. But it's in that marriage that we see the first parents in this world come about. I encourage you to read with me in Genesis chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. It says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now that seems like a simple passage, and you may be sitting there saying, Well, Guyton, why are you going to this if we're talking about what, about what does the Bible say about parenting? But what we learn from this is that it takes two in God's design for parenting. I realize in the world today there are a lot of people that are single that desire to have children and so they're going beyond God's design to try and sometimes women to conceive children without being married and having a husband. Other times you have single people decide to go through adoption. Now hear me out. I know there's people that are going to write in and complain and say, you mean to tell me I shouldn't be adopting a child just because I'm single? What I'm saying is God's design was there for there to be a father and a mother. He could have created it so many different ways, but in God's infinite wisdom, he realized a child needs both parents. Now, you may be watching this, and you, you can't help your situation. Perhaps you are, you are a widow or a widower. Perhaps, for some reason, your spouse has decided to leave you, and there's nothing that you can do about that. Well, then you ought to be the very person to know how difficult it is 
for you to be serving as father and mother in that relationship with your children. A child needs his father. A child needs his mother. If you want further examples of this, go to Matthew chapter 1. It starts with the lineage of Jesus, but it records for us the birth of Christ. And we understand that it says in verse 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise, on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And we know that the Virgin Mary received the child in her womb from God. But God would send an angel to talk to Joseph. And in those verses, he would tell him, Fear not to take Mary as thy wife. And he did. It says that he didn't know her until after the birth of Jesus. But God understood that even for Jesus, it was important for him to have an earthly mother and an earthly father. If we want to be the best parents that we possibly can be, let us understand it starts according to God's word by there being a father and a mother because of that is what God designed. Throughout history, the path of life has been for most an unknown path. The struggle of mankind divine meaning to know from where we came to ultimately know where we'll end up. Questions like, is there a God? Or, what would God have me to do? All these questions can have an answer if we know where to look. The Bible. At Milestone, we offer several at-home correspondence courses. We have website resources, podcasts, and classes. Let us help you learn God's Word. Please visit the website for more resources. cocmilestone.com Again, that's cocmilestone.com. We would love to get to know you. When I read Dr. Meg Meeker, she writes in chapter 10 of Boys Should Be Boys, uh, a phrase that I really like. I don't know her complete religious background. I don't know her about her spirituality, but I appreciate this paragraph. It's here in chapter 10 that she writes, Boys need God, all boys, whether they are 3 or 23, the single greatest deficit operating in a boy's life isn't education, lack of opportunity, or even lack of stable parenting. It is the faith in a God who cares. You know, that kind of goes along exactly with what God's Word says in Psalm 127. Read with me here what God has to say. He says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Now there's two things that I really want us to notice from Psalm 127. And first, it's that your house, and that means your home as father and mother, as a parent to your children, you have to allow your home to be built by the Lord. Faith in Him, the principles of His Word. You know, there's a lot of people out there, they want to give their children everything. And so what they do is they go buy them stuff. And I remember that. I remember the very first Christmas with my oldest child, we bought him the little tykes, the little farmhouse with the little characters and the, the animals. We bought him a, a set of blocks that had the letters on them. I even remember spelling out Merry Christmas and putting his name in those blocks so that when he would wake up, that his first Christmas morning, he would see all these toys. Well, the joke's kind of on us because his first Christmas morning, uh, he could have cared less about anything that I bought him. But that's what we do as parents. We think that when we love them, we, we buy them stuff. And so we buy them clothes and we buy them uh, just things that honestly they don't, they don't even need sometimes. And so a parent thinks he, they are doing well when they take them to all the sporting activities, when they make sure they take them hunting and taking them fishing, they buy them a car, they make sure they pay for the education. And while all of those things are not inherently wrong, those are not the things that the children need. What they need is a relationship with God 
and there have a relationship with God when you allow your home to be built by the Lord. The second thing I take from Psalm 127 to help us as parents is not just that we need to let the Lord build our house, but we need to be thankful for our children. Now, I know that seems kind of like a given because for nine months we, we anticipate that child coming into this world and, and, and it's such a great blessing when, when that child comes forth from the womb and, and you're able to hold your son or perhaps your daughter for the very first time. And, and they're there and they're soft and, uh, and then all of a sudden the diapers start and then the crying starts and then having to pay for the formula sometimes or paying for those diapers or having to pay for childcare or having to wake up in the middle of the night or perhaps not even getting to go to sleep at night and then having to sit up at night waiting for them to come home from their activities and having to take them to school and having to take them back from school. All these things can become to a point that sometimes we forget to be thankful for our children. Remember what it says in verse 3, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of him. I love that passage because, yes, the busyness of life can make it difficult to remember that our children are a blessing, but they really are. In fact, you'll notice in many marriages, they actually struggle after the children leave the home because for many, many years, the children is gives you a lot of purpose in life. They are a blessing from God. They bring you sadness and, and lack of money sometimes, but they also bring you joy. They bring you happiness. They can bring you fulfillment. Now, it's important to prepare your marriage for when the children leave because that's what you are training them for is to, to one day leave the home. But you need to remember to be grateful, be thankful. Now, the reason this helps you in parenting is because when you're thankful for your children, you're going to want to spend time with your children. We're going to talk about the aspect of training here in just a moment, but when we are thankful for our children, we'll want to use every day to its greatest advantage to make sure that we spend our time with them. I don't know that I've always done that as a father. I've always loved my children. I would like to say I've always been thankful, but looking back, there are opportunities that I passed up to throw the ball, to go out there and ride a bike, do things with my children to spend time with them. Now that my children are teenagers and I realize the time I have to spend with them is, is growing less and less and their dependency on me is not nearly what it used to be, I'm thankful for them even more and trying to make the most of every day. So as parents, let's remember, yes, children need father and mother. Yes, our house needs to be built by the Lord upon faith in Him and His Word. And yes, every day as parents, let's be thankful for the greatest blessing that God has given us after life itself, after salvation through Jesus. He has given us the blessing of having children. Since 1987, the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies has been providing college-level Bible classes tuition free. In fact, I myself am a graduate of the school. I'm excited to announce that we are now 100% online, offering you the opportunity to utilize these courses to help you grow in your relationship with God. You can learn more so that you can prepare yourself for the next semester at nwfsbs.com. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. So we've already noticed that when the Bible speaks of parenting, it speaks of the father and mother being God's design for parents. We have also see that the Lord needs to build the house. We'll talk about that more in a moment. We as parents need to be thankful for our children, realizing they are a blessing from God. But what I want to focus on now is actually found in Proverbs, and it's the importance that we train our children. You know, I go to the store sometimes and I see young children that are misbehaving. And certainly that child is choosing to misbehave, but for the most part, I don't blame that child. You know, I look to the parents. Now, I realize there are certain circumstances that a child may have 
medical conditions, mental conditions that's causing that type of behavior. But many times, simply put, it's because the parents have failed that child to discipline and train him how he should behave. Children can be trained. That's what is spoken of when you read Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know, we get that with our, with our animals. Now, I'm not saying that a child is an animal, but let's think about it in training aspect. Your dog, if he does something good and you reward him, then all of a sudden he is going to do that same thing again. See, my little dog, I have a Maltese. I know that's a little foo-foo dog to some people, but that's what we have because of allergies. And in the morning times, I make my sons their lunch to take to school. Now, our Maltese loves deli meat. Go ahead and send in the emails complaining to me about how you shouldn't feed deli meat to your dog. But if it's good enough for my kids, it's good enough for my dog. Now, he comes over there and he wants initially to jump on my leg and scratch and to bark every time he hears the sound of that deli meat opening but I don't give him the meat. I make him sit, and I'll tell him, sit. And when he sits, I give him the meat. After several days, what ends up happening is he stops coming over to my leg, scratching on it, barking, doing the behavior that I don't want him to do. He comes over there quietly, and he sits on the floor, and he waits for me to give him a piece of deli meat. Now, y'all, our children are much smarter than these animals. They get these same concepts. If you go to the store and, and all of a sudden your child pitches a fit in the store for a candy bar or for something that's in your purse, like mothers, or, or, or for whatever it is they want, if we give it to them, we have trained our child to behave in a, a bad way in order to get a positive reaction. See, God understood this. That's the importance of training. Look at later on in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. The rod of correction. And I, I know it's not politically correct and, and to think about corporal discipline today, but I'm going to tell you that if I wouldn't have had a paddle used on my rear end whenever I was at school, I don't know where I'd be today. If my daddy wouldn't have taken the belt off and to, to lay it upon my rear end to correct the, the poor behavior, I promise you I wouldn't be the preacher, the man, the father, the husband that I am today. And no, I'm not perfect, but it took that rod of correction. Now, I'm not saying you have to, to spank your child. Perhaps you don't want to use spankings. And certainly we never endorse abuse. Do not abuse your children. But you need to use the rod of correction. You need to not reward poor behavior. He pitches the fit. He's acting badly for the candy bar. Don't give it to them. Be strong enough. Don't, don't, don't sit there like some parents, but my child won't love me. Now, he will love you later on for teaching him the things that he needs to know. Let's also go over to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15 through 17. It tells us here, the rod and reproof give wisdom. Notice that. The rod and reproof give wisdom. Don't you want your child to be wise? Don't you want him to be smart? How does he get that? through reproving him, through correcting him. He goes on and says, But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Now, this is a little bit of a side note, but, but parents, some of you ought to be ashamed the way your child is behaving because the only reason they're behaving that way is because you haven't disciplined your child. Keep reading from God's infinite wisdom with me. In verse 16, when he says, When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, ye, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Parents, you need to be willing to train your children, and that includes discipline your children. If you don't want the government to have to discipline your child by putting them in prison, perhaps today you need to put them in time out or take your belt off and put it on his rear end. Do not think that loving your child doesn't mean you don't discipline your child. If you sit there today and you sit, say, but no, no, Guyton, I don't think that discipline, that child, that's going to be good, then you're actually saying you know more than God. 
And that would be very foolish. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he shall not depart. The Milestone Church of Christ understands the importance God places upon family. Parents are given the charge to train their children and teach them about the life, God, and his love for them. We strive to help families in this through Bible classes of all ages, biblical worship services, service opportunities, and other programs for the family. Learn more at clcmilestone.com, or better yet, come visit us in person at your earliest convenience. Kind of goes along with the idea of training your children. But the next point I really want to make is that you need to teach your children about God and His laws. We're told there in the book of Ephesians that fathers are not to provoke their children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. I want to go to the Old Testament, though, because there's a principle that's found in Deuteronomy chapter 6 that's very important. We're going to start reading right there in verse 6. It says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Your children are counting on you to teach them about God. Now, it's unfortunate that oftentimes as fathers, and encourage you to watch next week as we address husbands and fathers, but it's unfortunate that many fathers expect their wives, the mothers, to teach them about God, their children. But it's our responsibility as fathers. It's our responsibility to work together as a parenting unit, father and mother, to teach our children to love God and to keep His commands. It means they have to know the Word. Well, this starts simply by taking them to worship. Take them to Bible class. Those are great things that that we can do, but unfortunately, that's all some parents do. They think, we'll we'll just take them to church, so to speak, and, and that'll be enough, but it's not. Just like Deuteronomy says, you need to be talking to them about the commands of God. You need to be sitting down at the table with them. You need to, when you rise up in the morning, before you go to bed at night, you need to make it a part of your daily routine and activity to talk to them and teach them about God. Now, always remember, the best way to teach them about God is to to show them a life of servitude to God, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. Your children are counting on you. Think about what Paul would tell Timothy. He says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. You know, when our children are involved in things, we want them to have everything that they need. Before we send them to school, we we make that trip to Walmart or Costco or wherever it is you buy school supplies. And we buy them the pencil boxes and the crayons and the pencils and the paper and the notebooks because we want our children to be equipped for everything they need at school. They go to play baseball. We buy them everything they need plus some. I I get a kick watching these little kids that can barely swing the bat, but they have to have their batting gloves that mom and dad made sure that they had. And so we understand the concept of equipping our Christian, uh, excuse me, equipping our children for success Well, God says the Word of God can equip your child for every good work that they're facing in this life. Why would you as a parent not want to teach your children about the Word of God? Don't just do it on Sunday. Don't just do it on Wednesday night. But take the time to talk to your children daily about God and His Word and show them through the pattern, example in your life, what it means to be a follower of God, what it means to be a Christian. The other thing I want to recommend to you is I, as a parent, when I love my child, when, when I, with my wife, as that parenting unit, are training our children, we're, we're appreciative for our children, and we are sitting there trying to, to raise our children by allowing the Lord to build our house and teaching them about God, the other thing that we need to do is we need to pray for our children. You know, there's an old saying that says, live as if it all depends upon you, but but pray as if it all depends upon God. 
I know the passage in Philippians isn't specifically to parents, but it includes parenting. Read with me from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The frustrating thing about parenting is we can't control our children. Yes, we can train them. We can try and teach them about God and we can give them love and discipline them. But ultimately, they have to decide what they're going to do. But with God's help, we understand that we can train up the child so that when he is old, he will not depart from the ways of God. I want you to know that I pray for you because we need to be praying for our children. They are facing a world in which Satan wants their souls and he is going to try and rip them away from God and get them to love the world rather than love God. Don't you want to pray for your child? No matter what else is happening in the world, you will always find good news today. A proud partner of Have a Bible Question. A part of our program every week includes a question that Guyton and Troy answer for our viewers. Good News Today can be seen on many of the same television stations that air Have a Bible Question. You can also watch the program on our website, gntv.org, or on your phone through our apps. We also have a channel on Roku and Apple TV, as well as episodes archived on YouTube. We'd love to have you join us. I hope you're enjoying the program. I want to tell you about a great opportunity that you can have your Bible questions answered. Every single Tuesday night, I'm joined here in the studio of the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies by Troy Spradlin, Jeff Orr, and Ray Brantley. Together, we answer questions with Bible answers. So join us every Tuesday night at 630 by searching for Have a Bible Question on YouTube, on Facebook Live, as well as our website and a podcast afterwards. Would you like to know more about God's Word, the Bible? We would like to send you a free Bible correspondence course. You take each lesson that we mail to you and complete it at your own pace. This allows for little pressure and for God's Word to do the teaching. Upon completion, mail it back in the postage paid envelope. You then receive the next lesson in the mail. If interested, go to cocmilestone.com or call 850-479-8878. Thank you for your interest and have a Bible question. If you would like to contact us with a comment or question, you can visit our website at haveabiblequestion.com. You can email us at questions at haveabiblequestion.com. Or if you would prefer to write a letter, you can write us at Have a Bible Question in care of the Church of Christ at Milestone, 4051 Stefani Road, Cantonment, Florida, 32533. Don't hide your face from me. Hold my hand all the way.